morning, Jimmy. Hardwood cabinetry is not a fun job. <laughs> we're gonna sand it all back and we're gonna paint this top of the bottom unit and then the slab is just the finish to it. This looks awesome. Okay. Me go on top now. Good luck. Alright, up to down your house. Here and we're just gonna unload these timbers. And what are we doing today, Kemal? Uh, Starting my uh, what here? Frames. <laughs> you just wake up, mate. <laughs> yeah, so we've actually just realized we forgot to, we haven't actually squared off the house yet, so we'll do a little exercise just to square off on top of the joist. We've kept the house really square as we've gone at every stage. But this is like the final check. So this is actually where the frames for the walls are going to sit on top of. So we're just using a bit of old school maths. Hundred now, stay limb. What now, Mark? Me should cash him. One six what? It's using a bit of Pythagoras, Pythagoras theorem. <laughs> Pythagoras theorem to square off the building to make sure that we've got our corners in exactly the right spot. It's really, really hard to show this place, um, even just with a GoPro and a wide angle lens, but where I'm standing now, you might be able to get a bit of a vibe for just how much time we've taken to not just fit a house into the terrain, but build a house that fits the terrain. So we've got trees like completely surrounding the house. Now they're all determined to be safe based on their size and, and the direction which they're leaning and the direction of the prevailing winds. But essentially we've got an L-shaped building which focuses the whole centre of the house around this big deck here. And that is what's going to keep this house ultra cool and give us that really beautiful indoor outdoor space. So it's a bit cloudy this, after, this morning so you might actually be able to see a bit better how close these trees are to the building. So we've got this massive screen here which is really important to us because we really wanted to fit into the landscape and you're not to be able to see the house from the ocean. Um, but that also provides shade up until about, what time is it now, like 10 o'clock. Yeah, um, 9, 30, 10 o'clock, you're not actually getting any sun on the roof yet even, so that's really, really important. So I guess from a materials perspective, we've been really, really focused around making sure that we use materials that will last, that are termite resistant, that are durable, suitable for this climate. So we've used a lot of natural timber species from the area. So we're using two species of timber here, the Delinea or Kapachu, which is for the framing. It's got a lot of silica in it, a lot of sand, so the termites actually physically can't eat it. Uh, and then we've got Vitex for the subfloor and the deck, which is better in wet areas, but is also has a sap, which is termite, is poisonous to termites, so it's termite resistant. Yeah, making sure that we build a cool house that is really energy efficient, so we don't need aircon is really important. Making sure that we use uh, materials that are long lasting and are gonna be here for the next 100 years is really important. Uh, making sure that we built a building that fits into the landscape and complements it, but also uh, we designed the building because of the trees that were in the, in the vicinity and making sure that we didn't just build what we wanted, maximizing even the ocean views, but then destroying a whole bunch of habitat and rainforest that didn't need to be destroyed. Um, so we've actually chosen the site also because this is an area that was devastated by a cyclone about seven years ago. So all of the big trees have been taken out virtually. Um, there's two rotten trees that were standing on the block, which we felled. There is the top sections of those, which were still good timber we are using for furniture. So we're doing some nice um, cross-cut log furniture. Yeah, basically everything else was left is this sort of stuff, this really small 
sapling stuff that we just cleared out. That was another reason behind the design of the building and making sure that we, uh, we didn't take any more. If we had have gone another five metres or seven metres in either direction, then we would have had to fell another four or five big, beautiful trees, and we just didn't want to do that. I touched a little bit on the terrain yesterday, but to give you guys a bit of a look, not yesterday, last week. This is the pitted limestone that we're building on, okay? So this is super, super harsh terrain. Yeah, it just took a long time to achieve anything until we got up to this sort of bare and joist level where you're actually on the subfloor and you're not touching the ground. Well, as a few people might have noticed, no one's actually commented yet why we have half of the deck up and it just looks really random how the building has been built so far. And that's because, again, we just wanted to minimise our impact. We literally have a 1.6 metre wide road that comes into the block here and then we have the actual space of the house plus one metre, sometimes not even one metre either side. So we've got nowhere to actually build the frames. We've got nowhere to build the house. I hate building houses on joists because it's just not safe. And I decided that we'll do things a little bit in reverse and we'd actually build this deck section first, which we could string up a tarp as well, which gives us a bit of coverage and protection from the sun. But we can frame you know, efficiently on the deck here, then stand our frames up and slide them back onto um, the rest of the house. So that's going to be really, really crucial. Yeah, get this job done quickly, but without having to clear a whole space here of this beautiful bush, just so that we could assemble frames and carry them up onto the building. So also with the timber, this is all harvested on the mainland, where there's the big volcanic forest, not on the, uh, not, not on the island here, which has a much more fragile and slow-growing forest. So it's harvested using uh, local sawmills. We have a couple of operators who have their own little businesses who take these portable sawmills into the bush, fell the tree on site and mill it on site. So very low impact, as low impact as you can get when it comes to timber harvesting. And it's a, a form of harvesting which favours the local resource owner. So it allows them to make the most amount of money per cubic metre off that tree possible versus the devastating alternative of commercial logging, which is rife through this country. It's another way of supporting the local timber production and get some more money into the local communities and means that we get a beautifully produced local product that you know is designed to survive this area. So if you bring a piece of pine into this area or even bamboo, you know, the mold grows all over it, the rot's insane because, yeah, this environment is just a little bit different to what we have back in Australia and elsewhere. Time is that is that one better? There you go. We're having wraps. Kids are having bread, leftover beans from last night. Yum yum. Yum. Pretty yummy. <laughs> That's good. Nice having leftovers. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. Okay, booty. <laughs> Sliding wild no more. Me try building three fall blow in India, then buy me calling my boy for helping me for up on me. We had a bit of a brain fart, or I did. Um, we didn't actually put in the frame for the window, so we've just done that now. We just put in the last horizontal timber across for the top of the windows, and then this one is finished, and we'll go on to our next one. <laughs> so, who's the mark mind this time, huh? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Mark twice, cut once. <laughs> <laughs> that was meant to be a video of us sliding that frame out, but it was a photo. <laughs> um, super heavy frames because this is all hardwood.
first wall is up. Woo! All right. So we managed to get a couple of frames up. It's, uh, we're knocking off a little bit early. Well, I am. The boys have got some other stuff to do, but um, Katie and I just need to get in the water. We've been in the water for like 10 days, like properly. So, yeah, we're just gonna jump in on every point and see what's around because this is what happens. You get busy and then you realize that you haven't been in the water for two weeks when you live on one of the most beautiful coral reefs in the world. It's crazy. I'm heading up top to um, get some things ready for dinner. We've actually been going up to the new house up to the deck. We've done it a few times now where we've gone up and had like an easy dinner up on the deck. So we decided that might be fun to do that today since we're vlogging. So I'm gonna go up, we're making sushi for dinner. We're gonna do some crayfish and some tuna. Yeah, get that done so that I can get in the water with Jace this afternoon and go for a free dive on Uthi Point. We've finally got clear, beautiful water. The jellyfish have cleared out and there's huge tides. So we've got beautiful, clear incoming currents. Yeah, go get this stuff done so we can go and have some fun. Turns out my sushi rolling mat is really moldy. <laughs> it's gross. Anyway, I think I'm gonna have to, I don't have an alternative, so I'm gonna have to use it. I'll clean it somehow. I've just come out of the kitchen down to the welcome jetty to get rid of some scraps in the ocean, just things that we can't compost. Um, so there's things like onions and citrus and chilies and things. And the water down here looks amazing. I'm pretty keen to go for a nice dive this afternoon. So I just need to go and get Jace and get out there. But look at this water. All right, we made it out. This probably isn't going to be as good as it could be, but we're going to go for a swim anyway and show you what's down there. Let's do it. We made it. We made it. There's our new house over there. serious amounts of salad in that roll there. Yeah. The Katie ratios. Don't throw that too wildly. Another day with the sunny sky Trying to light my way But I'd rather be wow. in the dark <laughs> I feel I'm the all the romance in the stars Surrounded by the universe with the moon and Mars I feel it
standing in our room. We have one of our walls. One wall. Mainly frames windows. Two frames have gone up. <laughs> Pretty productive day. Yeah, it's been a crazy day. day. Um, but we got in the water, which is good. Yeah. I've hardly seen you. No, I've hardly seen anyone. I've just been running around like a maniac all day. But, but um, yeah, hopefully we've updated you on a few little things and there's a lot more to come. So we'll see you guys next week and make sure you subscribe if you haven't already um, and like the video. That's all. <laughs> the end. Bye. Bye.